Could this world be a better place? But by thy mercy, by thy grace, kiss all I want in this lifetime. Michael won. I don't know what she wins yet, but we were just starting off today with a little bit of rock, paper, scissors. We'll go ahead and jam it today to today's lesson. As always, I am Micah. 
And I am Miss Bianca. There we go. And, <laughs> and just kidding, I'm Miss B. This is the fabulous Micah. We are here with another construction lesson for all of you beautiful brains and beautiful people at home. So last week, Micah, can you remind us, what did we talk about last week? The tower of what? Permission. Oh, we talked about, what, what was that P word? Permission. Permission, good. Do you remember what the city or the place was called in the Babylon. Bible? What was it? Babel something. Very close. Ba oh, wait, Babel. Oh, Babel. that was it. <laughs> Give me some. <laughs> Good memory. I know it was a whole week ago, the long many, many moons ago. We've done slept on it and all that, so it's hard to remember sometimes, right? Micah might have been a little sleepy one. It's a long week. She probably had testing at school. Sure, some of you guys have testing, right? So, oh, yeah. Tower of Babel. Today, we're going to talk a little bit more about how the Bible has the instructions for our lives. So, I want you guys to use those big, beautiful brains at home, and I want you to imagine, close your eyeballs, close them, close your eyeballs, and imagine a con construction site. Now, now I want you to imagine a construction site where there are no plans. Open your eyes. Micah, I looked at you, I think I opened my eyes a little before you, you looked very confused. <laughs> what were you picturing in your head? <laughs> With no plans, like whatsoever. Yeah. Um, like they were just building random things and they were like asking each other, why are you building this? I thought we were building that. <laughs> like, why are you building this? I think I can, that's a really good kind of envi envisionment. I don't think that's a word, but it is now because you know, <laughs> just came out. So, you know, Webster's, there's your word for 2021. You guys at home, maybe you picture the same thing. Like Micah kind of, I feel like you were bringing back last week's lesson, right? Talking to each other, this mm -hmm. whole communication thing, right? If a construction crew is trying to build a giant football stadium, right, and let's say they don't have any plans, do you guys know how chaotic, I think Micah already has an idea, how chaotic it would be on that construction site? If there was no blueprint, there would be no way to know where to even start. Where would the locker rooms go? What about the bathrooms? What about the stadiums or the bleachers or the concession stand? They have to have food because then you're going to have a lot of angry people and we don't want a lot of angry people at a football game, especially if their team is losing, right? What about the t-shirt shop? How would the builders even know what materials to use? That is crazy. So I said a word in there called blueprints. Micah, do you know what blueprints are? Blueprints are like instructions how to build things. And you know what, guys? We didn't even go over that before. Give me some. Big brain, energy, chef's kiss, immaculate. I love it. Blueprints are the guide that show a builder how to make a building. It doesn't matter if the building is a high rise, like those skyscrapers we see on movies, or a stadium, or even a tiny house. You have to have plans. The blueprint will tell you basically everything. It tells you how much material is needed. It tells you what kind. It'll tell you how to run the plumbing, which, you, you know, bathrooms, we want, we want to make sure we have enough of those, right? Electrical, we need lights, right? If it's hot or cold outside, we want to make sure we can change it on the inside. It tells you how big the room should be, how hot, how high the walls need to go. Every tiny detail, even how many doorknobs are needed, because, I mean, if you don't have a doorknob, on a door. You're going to be locked. <laughs> You're going to be locked in or locked out. I don't know which one's worse, right? But the blueprints tell us everything we need, right? The Bible says a wise builder builds his house on solid. Micah, do you know what the next word is? Solid ground? Yes, ground or rock. Give me some, another chef's kiss. I love it. That wise builder better also work on a good set of blueprints. Otherwise, he's going to be out of a job. Talk about fired. So, builders or building on a solid faith is no different than building a house. Micah, what do you think it means for someone to have a solid faith? A solid faith? Yeah. Like something that they're, like they're really passionate about maybe? Like solid, like there's no like little breaks or like, like little cracks in it? Good. Like, no breaks or cracks. Now, if I'm saying you have a solid faith in God, what do you think a break or crack in our faith in God might look like? Like sin? Kind okay. Of? That's a good one. Give me some. Like maybe sin might be cracks in our faith, right? So in order for us to have a solid faith, we need a good set of blueprints to help us count the cost of following Jesus and tell us how to live in every situation. So 
in our blueprints is going to tell us how many doorknobs we might need, how many door hinges we might need, how many screws. On that, you guys, the doors that open go like this. They open and close. The door hinge is what makes that happen, right? So thankfully, God has given us a set of boundaries. Micah, do you know what that book is called? Boundaries? Oh, the book that God has given us that gives us a set of boundaries. The Bible. Oh, love it. Big brain energy. So this book counts all the wisdom. A boy, a girl, a man, a woman, whoever you may be, needs to live a life that honors the Lord our God. So it also illustrates clearly, very clear, no blurred vision. Miss B doesn't have her glasses today, so it's not that clear, but the Bible is very clear that we should follow God's instructions to the letter. Like a certain builder, we're going to meet in today's scripture. So God will be faithful to save us in times of need, just like we're going to hear about this builder of a boat. Micah, could you read Genesis chapter 6, that's the big six, verses 9 through 22, please? Of course. This is the Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shame, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw corrupt the earth and had become for all the way all the people on earth had corrupt their ways. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end all to people for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both both of them and the earth. So make yourself an ark and suppress wood, make, make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are and this is how you're going to build it. The ark is, is to be 300 cubit blocks long, 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it. It, it leaving below the roof and opening one cubit high all around. Put a door inside of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all lives under the heavens. Every creator that has breathed on in, in everything. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish the covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, and your sons and your wives and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of the living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you, two of every kind of birds, of every kind of animal, of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Boom, boom. I love it. So, you guys, we learned a little bit how Noah and his family, they're on this ark, right? They were living before the people we learned about last week. The people from the Tower of Babel. They were before them. So the Way Tower... Before. Right. The, the Tower of Babel was in ancient times. And they were like ancient, ancient times. Right? He and his two sons were given a construction task. Not like construction paper, but you know, hammer, hammer, hit, hit. Task that was proven, or that had proved to be even more impressive than the tower we learned about last week. God gave them specific instructions to build an ark. Micah, what's an ark? An ark is like a ship. Mm hmm Yeah. It's not like a little teeny tiny little lifeboat. Huge. Huge boat, right? Huge boat. And it had to accommodate how many of every species of animal? Every. Every? Well, did it have like five of every species? No. How many? Two. Yes, ma'am. Two of them, right? Because if you only have one then you can't have no babies. If you have three, then you're going to have an extra one. They're taking up too much space. So they had to have two of every single one so that way the animals could continue living on, right? 
knowing his boys had to follow the directions to the letter. That means very, very specifically. So like if your parents tell you to go grab them the yellow cup out of the cabinet, you're not going to go grab the orange cup, right? They said the yellow cup. So there were very specific instructions that they also had to follow. And you guys, how long did it take them to make this boat? Take a guess. Take a guess. How long do you like think? Like months. Longer. Years? How many years? Six? More years. Ten? More. Sixty? More. A it took... hundred? Yes, say it louder. A hundred years. It took them a hundred years to build the boat. You guys, we barely live to be a hundred years old. And they're building a boat. Guys, I can barely bend and my knees will pop. And they're sitting here building a giant boat. That is insane. But it took them a hundred years to build this boat. And it was worth it because what ended up happening? All the earth and all the people just perished. Why? Was it because there's a giant earthquake and then they fell? No, because everyone was evil and violent and that's and God did not like that. At all. How did he destroy the earth, Michael? Um, what kind of, did he do like a giant storm or was there a fire, an earthquake? What did he send? I Why did they need a boat? I think they need a boat to like go in the water and ship away. Mm -hmm. Exactly, to sail away because God flooded the entire earth. I know we have lots of oceans on earth, in the in and on the earth right now, but God said, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and double that and triple that and quadruple that. And he flooded the entire earth. So Noah's family survived because of that. So like Micah said, back in the day, there was some really wicked people, right? The bigger story here is why God chose Noah's family to build this boat. Because like Micah said, everyone else on earth perished. That means they were, bye-bye, right? Goners. They were goners. Noah lived in a wicked, wicked time. It means like evil, wicked, right? Very wicked. Micah, show me your wicked face. <laughs> right, a very <laughs> wicked time. When no one was following God's word. Everyone but Noah's family had chosen to ignore the blueprints that God gave them, right, for living. And God was so overcome with their wickedness, like, oh, oh my goodness, I cannot deal with you people anymore. What is going on? He decided to demolish his creation and start over, right? So God chose Noah not for his boat building skills, but for his faith building experience. Ooh, she is that what you guys say right she. that was so good so I'm gonna say that one more time God chose Noah not for his boat building skills because he was good at building boats but because his faith building experience because Noah chose to have that solid faith like Micah mentioned earlier where those little cracks and breaks weren't as big as everyone else because Noah loved God that much it's a strong reminder that we need to build our lives on the Word of God so that like Noah we can be saved because there are going to be some waters in our lives as well. So if you open the Bible and flip through it, you're going to find it's very different. As Mike is slipping through, it's very different than a normal set of blueprints. You guys have ever seen blueprints? Sometimes like a big giant poster, Miss Angela, she has like the blueprints for like our church that we've mm -hmm. been building. And it's very different than when you pick up the Bible and look through it. There's no floor plan in the Bible. There's no electrical layout. There's no plan for where the bathrooms are gonna go, right? The book contains some pretty straightforward instructions like the Ten Commandments and the book of Proverbs. But for the most part, it's a collection of stories. Those of you who are old enough to do independent reading at school and know that a part of reading is comprehension and finding the main, do you know what that is, Micah? The main what? Did you guys talk about that at school? Finding the main blank of a story. You know the eye. I have no idea, actually. Really? Maybe idea? not yet. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Yep. Finding the main idea. And that's part of what it's like to read the Bible. You're going to be wanting to find some of the main idea of a story. Every story in the Bible has a main idea, and they all come together to make the blueprints of life. The story of Noah is basically like a classic example of how the Bible is filled with all these important ideas, right? It teaches us that there are consequences for disobeying God. Michael, what were some of the consequences that people had to deal with from the flood? What happened? <laughs> basically, right? That very straight up, no sugarcoating it at all. Yeah, it teaches us that we must obey God's word to the letter, to the T. And it teaches us that God is faithful if we're faithful to him like Noah was. When we obey God, God will protect us and keep us safe from harm. 
Just as the wise builders keep their blueprints handy at all times because they're wise, right? When he has a question about anything, big or small, he goes to the blueprint. Builders do not wing it, right? Have you guys ever had like a presentation or homework and maybe it's a last minute and you're like, um, I'm gonna just wing it and I'm gonna just do this real quick. And if you guys haven't done that yet, you probably will at some point because that I definitely used to do that all the time. We probably shouldn't always wing it, but sometimes that happens. We procrastinate, right? But wise builders don't wing it. They don't make any decisions based on a whim because if you make a decision based on a whim when you're building a building, that probably is not a very safe idea, right? The blueprint for many wise people is their Bible. And the success of any building project, that a builder follows the plans, right? I think we kind of know where this is going. If we want to build a strong faith, very strong, maybe not like muscular strong, but we get the picture. Mike has been working out, not mad at it. We need the Bible within reach at all times. We need to read it. Micah, should we read it once a week? No. Nope. Should we read it once a month? No. Nope. How often should we read our Bible? All the time. All the time. Yes, we should read it at least once every day. We should read it daily. We need to learn our memory verses and we need to run to the Bible anytime we have questions or we have big decisions to make. And I'm gonna give you guys a hint. When you read your Bible, you should pray before you even read it. Sometimes we pray afterwards and that's good, but the Bible can be pretty confusing. Micah, have you ever read something in the Bible and you were confused? Oh yeah. Yeah, me too, even now. But it's really important that we pray before reading. That way God prepares our minds and our hearts and our eyes for what he wants to show us and reveal to us. So the Bible is the blueprint that saved Noah and it's the blueprint that's gonna save Micah and me and all of us and all of you at home from sin and lead to eternal life with Jesus. So like a wise builder, keep that blueprint handy and lean on the word of God. That being said, Micah, you wanna do the honors and end us out in prayer? Of course. I love it. Let's go ahead and bow our heads, bring our hands out and our eyes are now closed. Go ahead, Micah. Lord, please bless the other person on the other screen watching us and they had a great week and they learned something new that they never known before and maybe they didn't even know about this story that we read today about Noah and that they will build their own ark and they will follow the, their own blueprints into heaven. Amen. Amen. Bye you guys. Bye. Oh wow.